Hey crew, welcome back. This week we're gonna be talking about a subject that many of you have been asking about and waiting for for quite a bit, lightning. So can you really prevent a lightning strike? We're gonna talk about available products that you may or may not know exist. We're gonna talk about installation and of course, cost. Now let's get to it. I'm Sid and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim, my dad, Ty, my sister, Maddie, and our salty dog, Stella. We started our adventure refitting a Lagoon 450 before taking on the massive project of resurrecting a sunken 2021 Leopard 50. It's been one heck of a ride, but we're on this adventure to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. There's a lot of things to consider when gearing up your boat to be safe and reliable. Having a stock of spares, building redundant systems, adding safety equipment like first aid and life rafts. All of these things you can plan for and you can train for, but of course, the one thing you can't plan for is lightning. The Dauntless crew has spent a lot of time, money, blood, sweat, and tears getting our boat ready for our um upcoming adventures. So of course, we want to protect her, especially from lightning. I know a lot of boat owners that have been hit and some of them more than once and it's always dangerous, expensive, and takes so much time to repair the damages. Plus, those people that have been hit report finding electrical gremlins up to a year after being struck. So the big question is, can you prevent a lightning strike? And if you can, how does the process work? So first we need to understand how lightning works, and I'm gonna explain it to you how I understand it. It's basically a massive collection of static electricity, like you would make by shuffling your feet on the carpet or rubbing a balloon on your head if you had hair. Uh, as a storm cloud develops, that creates this static charge, and the charge is usually negative. And as it moves over the Earth, well, the opposite thing is happening. And objects on the Earth, like people and buildings and, and boats, we create a positive charge. So where it gets exciting is when, for lightning to form, the negative has to meet the positive. Negative charges from the clouds are sent down towards the ground in what's called a stepped leader. Meanwhile, positive charges from the buildings and people and what have you are sending upwards streamers. One side is positive and one side is negative. So when the two meet, bang. Now, how do we prevent this from happening on our house or our boat? As I started doing my research on this way back when I started on our first boat, I found this thing, a four spar lightning master. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have seen these before, but they're everywhere. Now, I believe these have some level of effectiveness, but there's a few things that I really don't care for. One, the installation is just screwing or riveting it to the side of the mast top, and the contact area is like this big. And number two, force bar indicates that, of course, the mast needs to be grounded, but their counting is using my mast as a down conductor to channel the lightning on a potential strike. So the whole point is not to make my boat an 80-foot lightning rod. Force bar's position on lightning and the, and the phenomenon has seems to not have changed very much in the last 15 to 20 years. I'm gonna read the disclaimer that they put on this product from my phone so that I, I get it right and I don't screw it up. So basically what they're saying is this. We do not claim that this product is 100% effective in preventing a lightning strike. At the present collective level of understanding of the lightning phenomenon, no one can make this that claim. So in essence, it's lightning protection device. That's a deterrent and not a preventer. So it's a better than nothing category for me, but it still gets struck frequently. Yes, it is cheap and it helps, but it really doesn't give me a warm and fuzzy feeling. So what else is available? This. This is the CMCE by Surtec. I was first told about this a few years ago by a captain friend of mine that had installed several of these on his boss's house and boat in Palm Beach. They were losing about one palm tree a year from lightning strikes. So in addition to the house, they put it on their 100 foot catch and there you go, no more strikes, it works. So I started doing some further digging and it turns out that these things are everywhere. Cruise lines use them. They're on countless super and mega yachts. The Panama Canal uses them. Airports, stadiums, oil rig platforms, cell towers. Obviously you get the idea. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe they're onto something. So I started digging into the tech on it and how does it actually work? It was actually based on a 1916 Nikola Tesla patent. The CMCE 
basically is a device that it deionizes the air around it. Effectively, it just drains all of the current, positive or negative, to the ground. So this makes a properly installed unit invisible to any of these step leaders coming down from the clouds. In short, the lightning can't see it. Therefore, there's nothing to attract it, and then there's no lightning strikes. It's a lightning preventer, not a lightning protector. So does it really work? Yes, it does. They've installed thousands of these things all over the world over the last 20 years, and not one of these units that's been properly installed has ever been struck. That's 100%. That gives me a nice warm and fuzzy feeling. So that being said, there are a few things that need to be considered. Like I said, one that's installed properly. Uh, you need to connect them. You can't put it on and not connect it to ground. That's an absolute must. And number two, this prevents lightning strikes. This prevents a direct strike on your boat or your house. It will not protect you from any level of side strike. So if you're in a packed marina or a crowded anchorage and you're right next to somebody that's gonna get hit, they could get hit if they're outside this circle of trust or this cone of protection and you will not get the direct strike, but you could take a side strike from them. So do keep that in mind. All right, that being said, why haven't we heard about these? Why aren't they everywhere? If they're so great, well, why isn't everybody using them? And these are good questions. So I did call and I asked and I said, why, why, are, why is all this happening this way? And they gave me some pretty straightforward answers. One, they're not a massive multi-billion dollar company and advertising is expensive and it takes a lot of it to be able to spread the word globally. So what they mostly do is focus on industry, government in infrastructure, things like that. And that trickles down, like I've seen in this, in the market of big boats and these big super yachts. Now the good news about this is that they do make smaller units that we can use on our boats and regular size houses. The second reason why you're not seeing these is because of cost. They aren't cheap. It's not some stamped little piece of steel that's got a pom-pom on the end of it. it. It's a real device and it's a real piece of equipment that costs money to build. Depending on what size boat or how big of a structure you're trying to protect, the cost of the units can range on the low end from five to 7,000 up to 20,000 or more to be able to, to protect that boat or that structure. Now there's no two ways around it. That's a fair bit of coin. But what does a lightning strike actually cost us? Let's talk about it. There's deductibles. Deductible on a boat like ours could be $10,000 or more. Uh, a new chart plotter alone is three to 7,000 bucks. Not to mention the cost of engine computers, electronics, all the other things on a boat that have circuit boards, computers, all that stuff. Time, now time is a big one. So except for safety, that's our biggest commodity that we have in life, right, is time. So diagnosing the, the problems or the damage, ordering new equipment, uh, installing the equipment, shaking down the boat and re um, getting those systems back up and running again. That could take months, not to mention the dockage or storage that you're gonna be paying while these repairs are being made, losing your vacation, losing that long awaited cruising season. It's a lot to deal with. And some of the best cruising is in really high lightning strike areas. So my thought is this, it's reasonable to ex expect that there is a, a good possibility that I could get struck in these areas being there over the next few years. If that happens, it's gonna cost a ton of time, money, and heartache. And if I can prevent it, and it costs me less than one deductible, that seems like a logical investment to me. So it's kind of like buying a second insurance policy is the way I look at it. I mean, what I've spent insuring the boats to protect them from all kinds of things, including lightning strikes, I've spent way more than this in the last few years anyway. So that's really what I think I'm, I'm buying. I'm buying peace of mind and I'm buying an insurance policy that's protecting me from, well, the one thing on the water that I really can't control. We're very concerned with having safe equipment, being well-trained, having redundancy, all that stuff but I really want to preserve my time with my family as much as possible and extend that cruising without an interruption or a potentially a catastrophic event like a lightning strike. So um, that's why we made the decision for us. Now, full disclosure, we are in partnership with 
uh, EMP Solutions. And EMP Solutions is one of the largest dealers or distributors of this product globally. And they provide everything for the United States and, and, and other countries. Now, this video is really more of a public service announcement, but if you feel like this is something that you would like to have on your boat or on your house, there is a link in the description below, and you can use a, a discount code Dauntless when you jump over to their website, which will save you a fair bit of coin when you're buying one of these. Um, the only other thing I can really show you from this point forward is how we're installing it and how we're gonna use it on our boat. So let's jump over to that, and we'll show you how we installed it and what it looks like now that it's on the boat. Again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. You patrons, you guys know who you are out there. We could not be making these videos without you, so we really, really appreciate your support. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. If you haven't liked it, do that as well. And of course, leave a comment for uh, the gratuitous algorithm benefit on the bottom end. So thanks again, guys, and let's get into the install. So installation of the lightning prevention system is actually fairly simple. We're gonna drill and tap some holes in the top of the mast. Then we're going to install a stainless steel base plate that bolts to the head of the mast. From there, we will attach an extension rod that allows us to elevate the device up above anything metallic on the mast. After a trial fit, I'm going to strip back the large conductor that I ran down the mast. This is the grounding wire that drains all the current down to the water. From there, I'm going to add some ferrules, get it crimped down and throw a piece of heat shrink to seal the end. Now all that's left to do on the top side is to insert the grounding wire into the base of the unit and secure it with these set screws. From there, we'll slide it in. We'll center it with some set screws, and then we're gonna run a bolt all the way through the unit and the support post to make sure that it stays on the mast securely. The one final thing that we do need to do is take our VHF cable and cover it with some heat shrink insulation. The manufacturer wants anything that is metallic that will be above the unit to just have some insulation on it. This will not affect our ability to send or receive any VHF signals, but it will provide that insulation above the lightning protection device. If you'd like to see a detailed installation video of this product, consider jumping over to our Patreon page and and supporting us with these fine folks. There we'll give you a blow by blow of the installation of this product along with some other behind the scenes stuff that we've been working on.